As the waiter delivers our salads, Jessica continues talking. I kept them, she says. Anyone would, right? She doesn't wait for me to answer, which is a good thing, because I'm not sure what I would say. She takes a bite and continues. As we leave the store, he asks me if I'll drive him to his car, which is parked in one of those parking structures on Beverly Drive. I start eating my salad, hanging on her every word. So we get into my beater of a car, she continues. I drive him a, the block or two, and then, when we're at the structure, he asks me if I'll take him right to his car. She pauses for another bite. Once we're there, he's on level P3 or 4 or something, he tells me that he's always had this fantasy of fucking a girl on the hood of his sports car in a parking lot. Taking a sip of my martini, I try not to look shocked. Jessica drains her second drink. So we pulled up my dress. I was wearing this Diane von Furstenberg wraparound. I'd gotten right, I'd gotten at Wasteland secondhand. Took out his cock and fucked me. Ooh. Right there on the roof of his Porsche. She smiles dreamily and pops a bite of salad into her mouth where she seems to savor it. Usually, she says, I need a lot of foreplay to come, but just being manhandled like that, having my panties practically torn off, got me incredibly hot. I don't know if that, it was that or just the idea that anyone could discover us, but I came harder and longer than I ever had. Did you ever see him again, I ask? Well, I'm partially horrified by her story and incredibly relieved that the waiter wasn't around for this part of it. <laughs> I have to admit that I'm also turned on. See him again, Jessica asks, laughing. She takes another bite of the salad. Bernie's one of my best friends in the world. So why aren't the two of you together? I ask, mystified that she was able to sleep with a powerful guy within a few minutes of meeting him and still consider him a friend. Well, for one, he's married to a little nervous Nellie he impregnated when they were both like 24 and in the William Morris trainee program. But how great a marriage is it if he's off, you know, meeting girls at Barney's? She shrugs. Their marriage sucks, but so do most, she says. Still, it's a non-issue. He's fun with nervous Nellie, the happy homemaker, for the most part. Christ, he drives me insane as a real honest-to-goodness boyfriend. I mean, I love him, but the man is beyond narcissistic. He really just wants a woman to raise his kids and listen to him bitch about his clients. This way, everyone wins. Except his wife, I point out. Trust me, wifey wins, Jessica says. She loves the house in the hills, not to mention the one at Carbon Beach. She's on charity committees with all the other Hollywood wives, trying to save the environment with her his money. And let's not forget that she's probably sick to death of her husband's cock. I smile uncomfortably. If I'm going to be around Jessica, I'm clearly going to have to stop flinching every time she says the word cock. <laughs> I mean, who the hell wants to get laid by the same man for 20 years? Jessica adds, shivering. I wonder if Claire and all our other friends from high school who got married at the first possible second will be sick of sleeping with their husbands after 20 years. Or if perhaps they already are. Then again, Claire seems to expend so much mental energy convincing herself that Eric is wonderful. She probably wholeheartedly believes she's never going to want another guy again. Can she keep a self-delusion like that going for the rest of her life? While it's impossible to imagine either of them cheating, Eric's passion seems to be limited to his golf games, and Claire just doesn't have it in her. It's almost as difficult to conceive of them having sex with each other. Theirs just seems to be like a partnership, the coming together of two entities to share a bed, plasma screen TV, and last name, with their baser impulses, if they had any, rendered almost irrelevant. From the beginning, Jessica continues, Bernie was clear with me that he couldn't give me anything, you know, real. Right after the whole Carthood thing, he told me he was married with kids, as if that wasn't completely obvious before he opened his mouth. <laughs> but I like you, he said. I want to see you again. The waiter delivers our steaks, and Jessica immediately cuts into hers. He just said, Beverly Hills Hotel, this Friday. I'm supposed to be on set with a client in New York this weekend, but I'd rather play hooky with you. Jessica takes a bite and gestures for another martini. So, whenever we weren't fucking or eating that weekend, we were talking. I told him about my situation, the bastard I'd moved to L.A. for, the debt, the rent I couldn't pay. And when he went home on Sunday night, he had already taken care of my rent for the next six months. As she puts a sliver of meat in her mouth, I try to imagine what it might be like to have rent concerns for the next half a year evaporate in an instant. And he's been setting me up with ever, other clients ever since. Are you serious? Well, Barney knew a lot of men like him. What, was that a timer? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little paranoid. <laughs> I thought it was like, thank you, girl. All right, I'm almost done. Um, 
Bernie knew a lot of men like him, wealthy and sexually unsatisfied, but not interested in the drama of having an affair or fucking one of those by the hour or by the night girls who consider having a GED some great educational achievement. She smiles, and he saw it as a real opportunity for me. As he put it, I should first figure out what I wanted, then find the people who could give it to me. She takes a gulp of her just-delivered drink. So, whether it's my credit card bill, or my car payment, or my rent, I explain what I want, and then find out what exactly I'm going to have to do to get it. Is it a week of regular sex, plus spending the night? A full weekend of anal? Hours of 69 with his wife while he watches and jerks off? <laughs> Playing living girlfriend for a month? Or just a night of something special? Special? Oh, you know, maybe there's a guy who likes to have his face shoved into the mm -hmm. toilet before he's chained to the sink faucet. Or he wants to stick his head in my ass until he comes, or have me piss in his mouth. Or I must look completely appalled because she laughs when she sees my face and continues, get this, I have a guy with a perfectly normal sized penis who likes to have me tease him by calling his cock small, <laughs> literally mock its size, yeah. and then bring in a big black guy for me to blow in front of him. When the black guy comes all over my tits, I have to make the guy, my client, lick the cum up, and then suck on the black guy's cock himself. <laughs> she shakes her head and laughs again. Turns out there's a whole subsection of humanity that's into that kind of thing. <laughs> the forced buy guys. I swear, you can look it up online. That's it.